Hello students, welcome to Statics. I'm Dr. Stewart and I hope you're subscribed to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to look at the key equations and go over some tips on how to solve shear and bending moment diagram problems. In this example we have here, we see that we have a beam that's subject to some pretty complicated loading. It has concentrated forces applied to the top, it has a couple moment applied, it has a distributed load applied, and it also has reactions at two points uh, along its structure. If we were to try to apply the, the uh, method of sections in order to craft our uh, shear force and bending moment diagrams, we would have to create many sections in order to analyze and create those diagrams. It's an unbelievable amount of work and it's not reasonable. So instead of using the method of sections, we are going to exploit the relationship that exists between distributed loads, shear forces, and bending moments. Luckily, those relationships have a calculus uh, to them. So let's see those equations. The key equations for our diagrams are as follows. Our first equation here describes the relationship between the slope of the shear diagram and the value of the distributed load, whether it's constant or a function. If we take that equation and we move dx to the right-hand side and do definite integration on both sides of the equation, we can find an equation for the change in the shear force from x1 to x2. And something that's interesting is we'll find that the area under the distributed load function, so say we have a distributed load that's triangle, triangular, the area inside of this distributed load function, that is equal to the change in shear. So if we have these, if we have this one equation here, we know how distributed loads affect the shear diagram. Another set of equations that we have describe the relationship between shear forces, and this is the shear force as a function of position, where shear, where the slope of the moment diagram is equal to the value of the shear force or its function. So if, shear fo if the shear forces are changing with, with position, then the slope of the moment diagram will also change. If we move dx to the right-hand side and we do definite integration on both sides from x1 to x2, we'll find the following equation. That the change in the moment over that distance from x1 to x2 is going to be equal to the integral of the shear force over that same distance. And an another interesting thing we'll find is that the area under the shear diagram is equal to the change in the moment. So if we have a shear diagram, shear force with position, and it's uh, changing, right? The shear force is changing. Say it has some slope like that. Then the area encompassed by that line is equal to the change in, in the magnitude of the moment, right? So that's great. That means that there's a clear relationship between the shear force diagram and the moment diagram. Another two equations that we have uh, are as follows, that if we have a concentrated force applied to our body, that concentrated force is going to create a step change in our shear force diagram. So whenever we encounter a concentrated force, it's going to step change us up or down by, its, by the magnitude of that concentrated force. And our other equation here is that a change, that a, uh, if, if we encounter a coupled moment, M0, on our beam, that that coupled moment is going to cause a step change in our moment diagram. So literally, if we're drawing our moment diagram, and we're going along, 
at the instance we encounter that, that moment, M not, we are going to do a step change increase in our moment diagram. So uh, with these six equations, we pretty much have described the relationship between distributed loads, shear forces, the moment diagram, as well as how concentrated forces and applied coupled moments, how those impact the shear force and bending moment diagrams. Now there's one last set of equations that are gonna be useful when we're solving these problems, and that is the equations that are gonna get us or, or the, that are gonna allow us to find the actual equation of the shear force and bending moment diagram. What I mean is this shear force, say we have a, a shear force dot diagram and it has a nonlinear functional form. What is this function? What is V of X as a function? Or what is, say, say M is, is also some nonlinear function? What is that equation? How do we find that equation, right? Well, there's two equations that we can use to solve for those real equations of the shear force and bending moment diagram. What we'll do is we'll apply indefinite integration to the slope equations above, where the shear force equation is gonna be equal to the indefinite integration of the distributed load with respect to x plus some constant or constraint C, some unknown C. We integrate that equation indefinitely, and then we, we've, we have it plus C, and then we need to find what is the value of C. To find C, what we can do is evaluate the full equation that we have here at a particular distance, at an X1 position, where then X1 would be injected inside of the function. Right, and then we solve for the for the unknown c to, to to find out what c is, and then how do we verify that we have the correct c and that our equation is correct? Well, to verify, what we can do is take our equation with the c that we found and evaluate it at another position x two, another position that we kind of know, and see if it goes and returns to where it's supposed to be. Is it is its magnitude equivalent if we put that x2 in the equation, right? So we can do something similar for finding the equation for the moment diagram, where we do indefinite integration plus some constraint or C unknown, and where we find that C unknown by evaluating that equation at a particular distance, x1, and then solving for C where there's only one unknown, this C. And then we verify by evaluating at another position, X2. All right. So I think we've got a pretty good idea of, you know, the equations on how to kind of start solving these problems. Now we're going to make a couple of example videos so you can see it in practice. Make sure that you uh, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell. I'm going to see you in the next video.